if you write it all the way out and then try and then, then combine, that's fine. I'll go straight to here. So that's totally up to y'all. All right, this is a quadratic. Its domain is R S. Quadratics do not have restrictions. Linears do not have restrictions. Cubics don't have restrictions. Everybody okay there? Yes? Okay, any questions on that one? All right, here I've got f of x is x squared minus 8x plus 4, and then my h is x plus 2. So yesterday when we kind of had these, we were looking at, okay, can't I, the first thing I would do is try to see would this numerator factor, because I don't love the way that looks, but I just got to see. So I would hope that x plus 2 might be it, and if we do that, that would have to be x, and that would have to be also addition, and 2, and that doesn't work. Y'all do see that that does not work, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can't factor that numerator, like it doesn't factor. All right, so because I can't factor that numerator, I pretty much have to leave my function looking like this, which we don't like, but it is what it is. Okay, so this one absolutely has a restriction, and it has a restriction because I have an x in the denominator. What am I never allowed to have in a denominator? Zero. You can't have zero. So what I have to do is find out, which in this case we can see it pretty directly, I would have to find out any value that would cause me to have zero in the denominator, which means I'm going to take my denominator and set it equal to zero. You could end up with a quadratic in the denominator and have to factor it and get those zeros. Does that make sense? Which sometimes happens. So in this case, I'm taking that denominator, x plus 2, setting it equal to zero, which we know is negative 2. So when we write our answer down here, when I write my domain, I'm going to say x cannot be negative 2. Every other value of x would work. So what would happen when I would graph that is I would have, like you'd see a graph and then there would be a spot, your graph would like shoot up at negative 2 or shoot down, I don't know exactly what this graph looks like without graphing it, but you would clearly be able to see that that, graph, that negative 2 is an asymptote there. Is everybody okay there? And there can be more than one, it depends on the degree of your denominator. Everybody good with that one? Okay, so this one, um, I have H on top, which is X plus 2, and I have G on the bottom, 4X minus 3. Okay, I can't do anything with either of those. Like, I can't factor anything out, make anything cancel, so I'm going to leave it like that. We okay there? So, is there going to be a restriction on this domain? So I'm going to do 4x minus 3 set it equal to 0. So x cannot be 3 fourths. So essentially kind of what happens, how you're going to know, is if you have division, you're probably going to have a restriction in your denominator. Everybody okay there? If you don't have division, you're probably going to be okay. Everybody good? All right, this one. So I've got f times g, so f is x squared minus 8x plus 4, and g is 4x minus 3. All right. Um, I would probably stack this for multiplication just because it's neater and doesn't take up as much space. If you want to do yours horizontally, I really don't care. It matters not to me. I'm going to stack it. So I've got... 4x cubed minus 32x squared plus 16x. Everybody okay there? All right, and then I've got, looks like, negative 3x squared plus 24x minus 12. Is that what y'all got? So it's like 4x cubed minus 35x squared. 40x minus 12. Is that what y'all got? Okay, what type of function is this? It's cute. What's it look like? Yeah, it's a squiggle. What do we know about the domain of cubics? It's going to be all reals. Everybody 
Okay, there, that's part of the reason, you know, we do that it is making sure that you kind of know those things about graphs because you know what they look like, then you can kind of answer that question about domain and range automatically. Everybody okay there? All right. So now we are back here. Jolie, did you get all that, baby? Um, I flipped my page and I saw your shit. Yeah, you good? Okay. Well, are you good up there? Okay. All right. So back here, I'm not going to work all these. These are pretty straightforward. I'm going to work this first one because uh, it's pretty simple. So when I have f plus g of some number, um, what we're going to do is we're going to get f of negative 2 and we're going to get g of negative 2. So if I get f of negative 2, I'm essentially taking negative 2 and I'm putting it in to every value of x in my function. Does that make sense? So if I evaluate that out, I got negative 2. If I put that, if you evaluate that out, I could just do it kind of quick like that. You okay there? With negative 2? Okay. So then um, I'm going to do g of negative 2, which is going to be negative 2 plus 7, which is 5. We okay there? Then I'm going to do f plus g. So f gave me negative 2, g gave me 5, negative 2 plus 5 is 3. Are we okay there? Okay, are y'all alright with that one? Okay, so the only thing you have to kind of be careful about, I'm not going to work this problem because it doesn't do this anyway, I don't think. But let's say I had this problem and I plugged in 8 and I'm just making numbers up. But let's say for F I got 12 and for G I got negative 6. Okay? So if I have F minus G, then that would mean I would have 12 minus negative 6. We'd have to capture that double negative there. Is everybody good? Mm -hmm. So just kind of watch your signs there, primarily on subtraction because that's where we mess things up. Everybody all right with that one? Okay. Um, I'm going to jump down and do 10 just because it's a fraction. Um, so I'm essentially doing f of 5 divided by g of 5. Everybody okay there? So if I evaluate f of 5, that means I'm putting 5 into this function. 5 squared is 25. 25 times 5 is 50. I mean, times 2 is 50. Are we okay there? 50 minus 5 would be 45. Minus 12 would be 33. You okay with that? I mean, y'all can plug that in the calculator and get a number. You don't need my help with that. If I did g of 5, I plug it in 5 right there. 5 plus 7 is 12. Can I simplify that fraction? I could divide everything by 3, which would give me 11 over 4. <coughs> so when you're doing these, when you have them that look like this, I'm not going to make you, like if you were in Algebra 1, I'd probably make you write that all the way out right there. In Algebra 2, I'm okay if you do it that looks like this. You're doing f of 5, you go get that number. G of 5, go get that number and then simplify your fraction. I'm okay with that. Everybody good there? I'm not going to sit, sit there and make you waste a ton of time writing stuff out that I know you can do. Everybody good? Alright, so compositions. Write this out here. Plug the second into the first, which will make sense in just one second. All right, so I have this right here, f of x and g of x. It looks like this. This is a, called a composite function. So it's something that is composite is two things that are put together. Y'all are okay with that, right? Okay, so this does not say fog x. Okay, that's not what it says. You read that f of g of x. That's what that says. Everybody okay there? The other way that f of g of x can be written would look like this. So you have f, and then you open the parentheses, and then you write the g, and then you open another parentheses and put the x in there, and then you can close both of those. So these two things say the exact same thing. They both say f of g of x, okay? The order that you do this matters. Because if you don't do the order right, then you're going to end up with a problem. So basically what we're doing is we're going to take whatever the G function is, we're going to put it into F. Okay? So and I'm going to make you write it this way every single time, but I like to do it the first time so that you understand where things came from. 
So my first function here is f. So my first is x to the third plus a, right? Kind of small here goes. And then my second function is g, which is x minus 1. Are we okay there? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take x minus 1, and I'm going to put this into the function where x is. So the way that is going to look is where I have x to the third, instead of x, I now have x minus 1, and it's to the third and then plus 8. Everybody understand what I did there? So I'm taking whatever g is, my second part, I'm plugging it into the first function everywhere there's an x, I'm putting that in there. We okay there? Okay, so then this means I have x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 1 plus 8. That's what I've got. We okay there? Alright, I'm going to leave my first binomial and bring it down, and then I'm going to go ahead and foil this um, together, which gives us x squared minus 2x plus 1, and then I still have this plus 8 back here at the back that I hadn't touched. Everybody okay there? Okay. Now I'm going to stack my multiplication over on the right side. Am I good? All right, so I'm going to do x times x squared, which gives me x cubed. I've got x times negative 2x, so I've got negative 2x squared. I've got x times 1, so I've got positive x there. We okay there? Everybody comfortable with what I did? All right, I've got negative 1 times x squared, so I've got negative x squared. I've got negative 1 times negative 2x, which gives me positive 2x. And then I've got negative 1 times positive 1, which gives me minus 1. And then I've got this um, positive 8 right there. I'm going to add that stuff up. So I got x to the third minus 3x squared plus 3x plus 7. That's what I got. Did y'all get the same thing I got? Okay. Don't Sometimes I mess up. Just make sure y'all get the same thing I got. All right. Everybody understands that one? Okay. All right. Got that one. All right, um, if I did this one here, usually kind of what I do, instead of writing both of these down, I usually write down like my starting function. So I'm starting with 5x minus 3. Like that's the function, that's my outer function. Does that make sense? So then what I know that I have is I have 5 times whatever I need x to be. Well, x is g of x, right? You okay there? And g of x is x minus 1, then I have a minus 3 back here at the back. Right, okay there? So I distribute that in. I've got 5x minus 5 minus 3. So I end up with 5x minus 8 there. Any questions on that one? Are we good? Okay, so this one right here, I'm not going to work this all the way out. I want to make sure you can set it up. Okay, so I'm starting with what function? What's my f function? X cubed plus 8. And so inside of that, wherever my x is, I'm taking my h function, which is 5x minus 3, right? So I have 5x minus 3 all to the third power and then plus 8. So this problem right here is going to pretty much look exactly like this problem up here as far as the process goes. Everybody okay? All right, draw a line underneath there. All right, so let's pretend we're doing a totally different thing, okay? So let's say if f of x was something like this. Let's say f of x was 5x squared um, minus 2x plus 1. So we're going to use the same f of h of x, but instead of f of x being x cubed plus 3, I'm making my f of x this right here. Are we okay there? All right. So in this case, what I would have is this 5x minus 3 has to go here, and it has to go here. Everybody okay there? So that would mean I would have 5 times 5x minus 3 squared minus 2 times 5x minus 3, and then plus 1. 
Okay, so if I have this, and you have a problem like this on your assignment. So if I have this, what do I need to do first here? Yeah, I have to FOIL this. You cannot multiply this five into that binomial when it has that power out there. You can distribute this all day long, that's fine. But you cannot distribute that five into that because it is squared. You gotta FOIL it first, then distribute the five. Everybody's okay there, right? Yes? Okay, just wanna make sure because there's not an example like that, but there is one kind of like that on your assignment. I wanna make sure we know the order in which to do those things. All good? Okay. Um, G of it, this one's pretty basic. Um, I have, I started with G, which is X minus one. I'm plugging in F, which is X cubed plus eight, which means in place of this right here, I'm putting X cubed plus eight, and then I have a minus one. Are we okay there? which means I ended up with x cubed plus seven. All right, so we're okay with those, right? Okay, so this down here, I'm gonna show you two ways to do this, and then you can decide which way you wanna do it. It, it will come out the same, it's just a matter of preference, okay? So, because this is a composition, like what we've been doing up there, if I <coughs> pretended that two wasn't there, I wanna follow this same format. And so I'm gonna take whatever my H function is and I'm gonna plug it into my G function. Is everybody okay there? So my G function is X minus one, right? And then I'm plugging in my F, which is, oh, sorry, plugging in my H, which is five X minus three. So then I have five X minus three and then minus one, basically. Are we okay there? which gives us 5x minus four, right? Okay, but I don't have x, they told me what x is. X is two, right? So then I can do five times two minus four, which is six. So that's one way to do it. I like this that way just fine. I think it's easier, but it kind of depends on how involved your stuff is. Because when you have one that's like this, you might can save yourself some little bit of time. So it's just a matter of preference. Everybody okay there? All right, so here's the other option. I can do f of negative six and evaluate what f of negative six is. So if I plug in negative six into my f function. That means I have negative six cubed, which is negative 216 plus eight, which would give me negative 208. Is everybody okay with how I got that? I just plugged in negative six in place of my f function, which is what we did up here. Right, okay there? All right, now I know what f is, right? f is negative 208. So now I can take my h function and plug in negative 208 to that function. So then what I'm doing is I'm coming up here where h is and I'm doing five times, five times negative 208 minus three, which is big number, I don't know what it is. Oh, negative 1040, negative 1040 right here, and then minus three, so negative 1043. Okay, it's a matter of preference. 